Today is the start of Mental Health Week here on DCU. Um, Helena, would you mind going through what does Mental Health Week mean here on DCU and what are some of the things that happen? Oh, well, I suppose uh, Mental Health Week gives us the time just to step back and focus on how we're doing um, as students as well as staff, I think, on how we're doing from the point of view of our well-being and how are we dealing with challenges and difficulties that we would normally be encountering, especially at this time of year where, you know, a lot of work is beginning to present itself and we're kind of right into the heart of social activities um, and if challenges were to arise, they'd normally be starting to arise now. Um, and so Mental Health Week is an opportunity to step back, um, and there's various activities, including this conversation that we're having today, just to reflect on how we're doing. Is there a few things that could help us to do a little bit better? And how can we support each other? Super. And as you said, there are a lot of things coming up. People are coming to exam time. Christmas is often a stressful period for some people. And the most important thing we'll probably do today is promote the various resources and services we have here on DCU for students. Yeah. So if you would mind telling us just a few of the resources and supports that are available here on DCU. Oh. So we have a number of resources, Shane. So for some people, uh, they uh, would like to go online. And we have uh, the Counselling and Personal Development Service in DCU has partnered with an international global um, community called Together All. And all DCU students, undergrad and postgrad, can access Together All at any time. So it's available 24-7, 365 days a week, a, a year. And um, what is good about that is that it's anonymous. So a press, and it's moderated properly. It's linked in with the counselling service, so we, we have a communication with, with people, so it's safe. And people can access courses, for example. Uh, how am I doing on my sleep? How am I doing on assertiveness? How am I doing on anxiety? They've also um, got small group conversations that people can opt in and out of. Um, and it's really a peer-supported group online. So for some students, that can be really helpful. We've also, talking about resources, Shane, have a mental health tile on Loop called Develop. And if you go into the mental health tile, we have a number of online CBT, which is Cognitive Behavioral Therapy programs, on a range of well-being and mental health issues, such as, for example, feeling low, um, feeling panic, um, feeling, gosh, um, I'm not really doing as well as I might. Mm. So you can have a wee look in there, and that's free to all students. So these are things that are available on, on Loop. There's also mindfulness podcasts, etc. Now that's you have to give a range of supports for people because what would yeah. suit with one person mightn't suit another. And other people, of course, will access the counselling and personal development service if they want face-to-face -face or online counselling support or indeed with the health centre to come and talk with Gertrude here or to talk with a GP within the health service. So there are a range of some of the activities. And then also, we also have a few events on My Events Hub, like you'd said, that kind of help students deal with the stress and have some skills to kind of work with it in that moment as well. Yes, that's very good. The, the workshops are excellent too, Gertrude. Yeah, so, okay. and they're available every week. So Amazing. people can pop in and pop out, so to speak, accordingly. No, it's great to hear about all those events going on across campus and especially having it still available to postgrads is amazing. I didn't know about that beforehand. Um, so, as we said, there's so, many, so much support available across DCU, but to people who think maybe going in for a face-to-face -face counting service might be a step too far, um, or just not right for them at the moment, what sort of coping mechanisms can they use by themselves to 
get over these feelings of stress or anxiety at the moment? So I work, as I mentioned in those workshops that I would hold weekly um, on Glasnevin campus and St. Patrick's campus, um, they're kind of the base of them is from the CBT, which is the Cognitive Behaviour Therapy. They looked at 20 skills to kind of help people who are struggling just with their emotions, with the stresses of life, um, some skills to kind of manage that distress, right? So a few of the skills that maybe I would bring up quite a bit and kind of encourage everybody to kind of use at different points in their day in their lives would be one, the stop skill, which kind of looks at stopping, taking a breath, asking yourself a series of questions of what's going on for you, what's coming up, how are you feeling this moment? And then the next one would be to just observe. If you took like a wide-eyed view on it, what would it have been like? What, what is going on? What are you thinking about it? What would somebody else say even? And then it looks at like pulling back and giving some perspective, saying, okay, if this was to happen in a few months, would I, how would I feel about it? And kind of giving it a bit of some context. And then it's just practicing that skill. So that's one of the skills called the stop skills. Very good in, that, in the moment when you're having that distress, when things are just feeling a bit too much and you just need a moment to just process what's going on for me right now. So I always encourage people to use that in the moment, especially when things are just feeling quite overwhelming in that moment. Um, another skill I would always use is soothe. Um, it looks at having like a bit of a self-care box for yourself, um, whether that is taking a bath, going for a walk, meeting your friends, listening to music, or even just doing your favorite thing. Again, it could be a lovely movie from when you were younger, anything like that. So it kind of, we kind of work together to kind of create your own little self-care box to be like, okay, what usually works when things go wrong? Um, people find that really helpful, especially when they're very hard on themselves. Um, so yeah, that's a really nice one to have. And sometimes students might not be aware of the support that's available to them or simply aren't ready to take that first step mm. or feel like they're not able. Why do you think asking for support is so difficult? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, I think a lot of us at times can feel a little shy about asking for support. Uh, and sometimes it can be just embarrassing because we feel sometimes we should be just getting on with it. And what's the problem? Everybody else seems to be getting on with it. And sometimes that can make it even worse. But actually, none of us um, are islands. Human beings, we, ca we can't live as an island. So it's quite normal mm -hmm. to ask for help and support. It's actually a healthy thing. Yeah. It's not a sign of weakness. It's the opposite, actually. But sometimes because we can identify with being, oh, we should be kind of super independent, shoulders back, march forward, which is great, but it's not the whole story. And sometimes just um, a helping hand by somebody that you can trust, that will have your back, and that could be a friend, a trusted friend, or it could be a wise person in your family or extended family or in your community, or it could be a professional service here in DCU, be it the health centre, be it the disability service, be it the counselling and personal development centre, be it the student advice centre, depending what the issue is. And Gertrude, working in the health centre, you get a chance to talk to some of these students and help them in what they're going through. What are some of the more common issues that you see time and time again? So I think the biggest one would probably be low mood, anxiety, stress with the exams, which probably hits most people, but maybe for some people it's a lot more difficult. Um, yeah, those would be the biggest ones. Yeah. Absolutely. And what are some of the usual tips you do for that you would give out for people who just have a low mood? They might not be um, at serious levels yet of anxiety, but just any sort of low mood, how would you help them? Again, I think I always go back to these decider skills. I think they're just fabulous to just help people kind of manage extreme distress or lower forms of distress. So I think it will come back again to... Again, like Helena said, reaching out to your supports. 
again they might not always be able to fix the problem but they can at least be there for you at that time again watch movies together go for a meal build some positive experiences i think those ones would be the biggest ones to kind of care for yourself as well that's great i really agree with what gertrude is saying and i suppose to add to that too would be sometimes we feel low when we come into a challenge or a difficulty and when we come into that difficulty sometimes uh, a little what's called an edge figure in us can come up and they'll give you all the reasons why you can't negotiate this new unknown terrain so it could be that ca or it could be talking to that girl or it could be dealing with a, a conflict that happened whatever the case may be but if we actually back off from it, while in the short run, it can make us feel, oh, relief. In the long run, we don't feel very well. And if we do that a few times, we actually are not satisfied with ourselves. So the thing is, when it comes to the challenge situations or the difficulty, it is wiser to try to support ourselves to lean into the difficulty. That could be like breaking it down into small steps. It could be doing it with a friend. It could be getting advice. But the more you lean into it and take steps over and build a bridge over into that unknown, uncomfortable place, ironically, your self-esteem, our self-esteem improves. And though, even though we might feel a certain level of anxiety about it, and we definitely will because that's normal, mm -hmm. a certain level of stress and anxiety is normal. And you're going to feel it at the edge. And we all, as human beings, have many edges. But that's the place of potential growth for all of us. So when we come to low mood, the more you kind of flee away from it, if you do that too often, you're going to not feel well and a person is going to feel deflated and they will actually feel low in themselves. So the trick is, is to recognize even those, those edge uncomfortable places would be, God, why would anybody want to go near anything so difficult? It actually has the diamond in the, gold bu in the, in the bucket if you can lean into it as opposed to avoid it. Yeah, that's very important for everyone who's listening, I'm sure most people watching this right now are students, and that advice of trying not to ignore these feelings that you are feeling um, will be very important coming up to these more stressful times. Don't try and run away from it. And I guess talking specifically about counselling, actually Helena, um, for people who don't know anything about the counselling service, could you describe for students who aren't aware, how do you go about availing of that or how do you go about booking a session, that okay. kind of thing? Okay, so first of all, you can come on to our website, which is dcu.ie forward slash counselling, and you'll get a fairly good idea there on, on wha how the service operates. But it's fairly straightforward. If you'd like to make an appointment, you email counselling at dcu.ie or you email... Um, spd.counselling at dcu.ie for St. Pat's. So we have rooms in Glasnevin and we have rooms in St. Pat's. Uh, and then uh, Nina or Catherine are two service administrators for the counselling service and they will help the student to register with us. And then you uh, and organise the first appointment. I suppose the, the most fundamental thing to say is that the counselling service is confidential. So that's really important uh, um, in that anything that is discussed between a student and a counsellor is confidential and stays that way. And the only time where we would discuss that with a student if somebody was seriously at risk, and that would make sense. And then it is informal. It is a conversation. It's trying to, you know, get to know the person and they to get to know us because we're obviously new to a student even though any given year we have people who return to us you know so you could have in a given year you could have somebody who came to us when they were in first year 
and now they've just gone into their first year PhD program and they come back, do you know, which is lovely to see. Um, so it's, it's rolling in that way. And then we're trying to figure out, okay, what's the problem? How can we unfold and unravel that? And what would best support the person? And that's basically the aim of it. But it's very collaborative and it's non-judgmental in its approach. It's not saying something is good or something is bad. It's just something is not going as well as a person might like it to be. And let's see what we can do about it. And Gertrude, I know as students, particularly people who have moved up here, they can be feeling kind of lonely and kind of separate from home. How do you deal with those feelings of kind of being somewhere new, particularly talking to the first years now at the moment, how do they deal with that kind of feeling of being separated from being home? It's a really difficult emotion to have, isn't it? You go from be having your support, to having your family, having all the people you know to joining this whole new environment that you don't know anybody and like you said, it's very isolating. I think the biggest thing you can do is be kind to yourself that you know this is difficult, that this is hard. Again, it's very difficult. Don't want to take away from that. All it is hard, but like Nina said, step into that a little bit. Try and reach out for support. Join society. Talk to your fr to a girl or a boy, anybody right beside you, and just say how are you. Try and make those connections little by little, and be patient with yourself to make those connections. Because I think it's quite hard sometimes to not make instant friendships straight away but that over time that it will, and just to keep trying. Yeah. And another question I wanted to ask you, particularly again for those students who have found themselves away from home for the first time, that connection between physical health and mental health. I know myself, I found myself scrolling through link, um, Just Eat and Uber Eats way too often. How important is your physical health to your mental health? Oh, that's a big one. Everything is connected right? If you're not eating well, sleeping well, looking after yourself, even you've seen us going for a little walk as well, if you're not doing all those little things, it's going to make you feel low. You're going to, if you're feeling isolated and you're kind of cooped up in your room, thinking about it over and over again, feeling a bit more overwhelmed, it becomes so much more narrow, right? But when you kind of get out, go for a walk, your perspective, Part of that stop skill is give some perspective. When you go for a walk, you're kind of getting a bit more of like a wider view of like, okay, you see people laughing, talking. Okay, you can bring up some sad feelings as well. But they can also bring up some hope of like, okay, well, maybe this will happen for me soon. And again. That's really great. And uh, following what Gertrude is saying is that we have what's called a window of tolerance mm. inside us. And it's a, a margin of ability or space and when we don't exercise eat or look after some of the basic physical uh, aspects for ourselves that window gets very narrow and if that window gets very narrow we're more inclined to get overwhelmed so one of the best things is to try to keep that window as wide as possible even when you're feeling low because the last thing you'll want to do is move when you're feeling low. But even if you can just walk around the block in small steps and build that little bit, not too much, because that will feel like too much and a person will close down shop and not want to do anything. So the thing is doing a little and that will start to improve and build and widen that window of tolerance inside. Super. And we've talked today a lot about the different supports and facilities, different tips for people. But if you could, Helena, um, say one final thing to anyone watching right now that is in need of some help, what would you say? Ooh, wow, that's a big one. What <laughs> would I say? Well, that's going to vary from moment to moment. But one thing I will say right at this moment is when we were out for a walk, just a short walk, a few, you know, a half an hour ago, myself and Gertrude were having a giggle about something. 
and we passed two staff members and they were saying, oh, laughing, here, laughing, because you're not serious. And I just thought it was sweet. And we just said, oh yeah, this is us. We're having another laugh. So I'm not trying to belittle anybody's feeling of feeling overwhelmed, but there is a lot of wisdom in having a bit of a giggle and a bit of a laugh now and again. Of course, your question, you know, you have many answers at different times. But right now, that's true for me. Super. And I guess to finish off, how do people get in contact with yourself at the health centre? So if you look up a DCU health centre or come up, underneath it you can book an appointment as well. So if you book through the health centre and you just say mental health nurse, it'll come up and I'll see it and I'll get in contact to make an appointment. And yourself, Alina? Yes, so you can call in either to the Counselling and Personal Development Service, which is on the Glasnevin campus in the Henry Grattan building on the ground floor, just opposite the Student Advice Centre, or you can email counselling at dcu.ie. And in St. Pat's, it's in the A block, uh, just near the church, uh, and it's also uh, in the health centre, uh, or it's spd.counselling at dcu.ie. Super. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, I would strongly recommend looking up all the different health week services and events that are going on. You can check them out on Loop. You can also check them out over on the DCU Student Union Instagram page. And if anyone feels like getting in contact, we have the two emails there. And also the DCU Media Production Society Instagram page. Send us a text. We can refer you on. And thank you all very much for watching.